Are we keeping on the things? I mean, you don't have to. I was going to leave mine on. Speaking of keeping these on, you can't check who's monetized on YouTube anymore. YouTube has removed a small piece of public code that indicates whether or not a channel is currently monetized. The code doesn't reveal how much uh, the channel is getting, just the fact that they are a part of the YouTube partnership program. This code has traditionally been used by creators, marketers, and journalists to confirm which channels are receiving money and by, and by people of various motivations looking to petition YouTube to demonetize a particular channel. Okay, I got you. Um, this change has also broken several internet tools such as is this channel monetized, which when asked if Linus Tech Tips is monetized simply responds that the user is sending too many requests. What? Uh, also known as it, it's not working. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I thought I thought we meant that it was like specific to our channel that it. It's, no, it's, I, I think what they mean is that they tried it on our channel, and that's the God. error code that it's currently spitting out because it is broken. Um, discussion question: Should details about who and who isn't monetized be more or less readily available? I don't know. I can think of um, uh, almost immediately. I can think of why YouTube would have wanted to do this. Um, which I, th I think is one point that we didn't necessarily bring up much about Twitch, which is I think part of their motivation is just hoping that they can spend less time uh, moderating and hoping that they can spend less time dealing with like the fact that uh, one of the bigger Twitter accounts I know about is literally just, is this person banned on Twitch or not? Um, like that's a huge thing. So yeah, I think they anytime, want to get away from that. Anytime that conversation comes up they have it's to talk negative. about it again and again yeah yes. chat was bringing up too that you know part of the reason part of the motivation for them to change the rules might have been to just avoid this constant cycle where someone does something to push the boundaries because that's what people do and then twitch would respond often in an inconsistent manner yes and then it Absolutely. would spark this huge conversation where no matter what they do even Why if what they do is favoritism blah, yeah, blah, blah. even if what they did was 100 percent in line with their community guidelines the conversation would still be about how horrible Twitch is because the rules weren't being applied evenly because of the other times that they didn't do it right. So they were basically in this in this catch-22 where if they don't do the right thing, then they're criticized for doing the right thing before. And if they do the right thing, they're criticized for, well, why didn't they do it before? And so if they just basically said, okay, well then, f*** it, everything's allowed... Th that Good. seemed like a way out, and then the internet exploded. And mo and moderation does not scale well. Um, so when you're a huge platform, moderation is like a big issue. But anyways, coming back to YouTube, uh, I think part of the reason for this is because yeah, they don't want that type of stuff. So when if they have a channel that's currently under fire, uh, and they decide to keep it monetized or not, yeah. now they don't have to deal with the flack. If they just take the flack for doing this once by shutting it down. And there's probably, I, I'm, I'm sure internally they were like, oh, this is going to get a bunch of bad press. But they're like, yeah, it's going to get a bunch of bad press once. And then now we don't have to deal with this problem anymore. I wouldn't like, be yeah. surprised if this is the first move. Maybe not even the first move because say, we could go farther back. Like we could go, we could go back to, yeah, the, the, just the reduction in transparency, whether it's removing access to dislikes, uh, whether it's running ads on non-monetized yeah, channels. that was a while ago, but yeah. That was a long time ago. Yeah. So that's the only reason this is a conversation at all, because it used to be that you could check if a channel was monetized by just watching videos on it yeah. and seeing if any ads played. But nowadays, it's impossible to tell because YouTube will just run ads against a channel regardless of whether they're actually paying out any revenue sharing. One of the things I asked them back then was, hey guys, this is Austin. No, sorry. One of the things I asked them back then was, hey, <laughs> if you guys are taking 100% of the revenue share on any video that is not YouTube partner program, don't you have a bit of a conflict of interest here? Don't you have an incentive to not allow people to in. promote videos that give you a 100% oh, revenue yeah, share versus a 60% revenue share or whatever the number is? Don't, I, I forget the number. because There was I a theory forget. back in the day that if you wanted to grow faster, you'd turn off ads. YouTube has <clears throat> always denied. Uh, uh, no, I, I, just a theory. Yeah, they're they take forty five. <clears throat> they take forty five. So, um, so yeah. So they would be taking one hundred percent versus the forty five percent that they take um, when there's a, when the ad plays on a YouTube partner channel. Um, they have denied every time anyone has brought it up that algorithmically there is any effect 
uh, from the monetization of a video. And I will say that personally, anecdotally, I have never seen evidence of an effect. Uh, I have seen non-monetized videos do extremely well. I have seen monetized videos do extremely poorly. And there are various reasons why we may or may not have had monetization enabled on a video in the past. Sometimes it was a requirement from a sponsor that if we had a, an in-video integration, they wanted their message to be the first thing people saw, not some random YouTube ad. So uh, we would often have agreements where for the first six months, we would have monetization on the platform disabled. Mm. Um, there are situations where um, you know, the community doesn't feel like monetization is appropriate for a video, like with the uh, recent controversy, for example. So we've got mm -hmm. monetization off that. That didn't stop that video from getting 5 million views or something like that. Yeah. So if there is a legitimate interest from the audience, no, I, I just haven't actually seen evidence to support that. But just because they haven't done it yet or haven't done it to me, doesn't mean that they won't do it ever or haven't done it to anyone. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I would have any way of being able to tell. Like if YouTube suddenly, you know, turned up the heat on their ad sales and sold 20% more inventory against the same number of views on the platform, and they were just like, hmm, why don't we just put all of this on random videos about dishwasher repair? and take 100% instead of 45%, and no one will be any the wiser. Woohoo! I would have no way of knowing that. Nobody would have any way of knowing that. Yeah. And in fact, what I suspect, although I don't have any way of knowing this for sure, but what I suspect is that a lot of these decisions about which videos are monetized or which ones are being served an ad and when, um, I suspect a lot of these decisions are actually driven by AI and driven algorithmically. So it would be nearly impossible for even an internal whistleblower to say, yeah, the executives got together and like made a call that we're going to put all of our you know, new ad inventory on these. Because at the end of the day, most of these engines are just input, yeah. experiment, try to achieve goals. So if the input is uh, you know, optimize uh, revenue for the platform, well, part of optimizing revenue is going to be putting ads on videos that are very engaging for viewers so that you have a longer watch session so they'll watch more videos and watch more ads. But part of that strategy could also be recognizing, hey, this is probably a one and done. I should probably cram as many ads down this person's throat while they try and troubleshoot an old CRT TV and they absolutely need this information and take 100% of that money. Yeah. And the actual teams who create these algorithms wouldn't necessarily know exactly what it's doing minute to minute. They could go back and kind of go, okay, so here's a thing that appears to be happening, but nobody <clears throat> made that decision. So there's nobody is culpable for it. And so again, I'm not saying this is happening. I'm just saying it's not implausible. Yeah. If that makes sense. Um, I wonder if this is just the next move towards what will be the next next move, which is not being able to check if a video is monetized. Tell me this, what benefit is there to YouTube for you to know if the creator monetized that video? So, would this, are you saying this would also obfuscate to the creator or just to users? Just to users. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Because back to, the, back to the Twitch conversation, it would keep YouTube out of the news. Yeah. It's like, yeah, just ads are just normal. And you click on videos and there are ads. And it is absolutely none of your <laughs> business from YouTube's perspective, whether that channel is part of the partner program, whether that video is you know, monetized by the creator or not monetized by the creator. Because, you know, imagine this, you know, imagine a controversial creator, um, you know, like especially, you know, you look at the way that politics are, are, are super polarized in the, in the States right now, right? So let's say no matter what side it is, someone is going to be super angry about some political commentator being on the platform for sure and having Guaranteed. the video monetized and going to call for some kind of boycott of the yep. platform for, yep. for supporting them, for sharing money with them. And so if YouTube just kind of went, 
Yeah. How about you just not know? Yep. You not know who's getting money. You not know which videos they've enabled monetization on. I think that you'll still see creators, you know, as a gesture, talk about, hey, I'm I'm turning monetization off on this video or, um, you know, uh, one, one that you see probably more often than that is... Which um, we could lie about now. I, I'm going to donate or the proceeds. at that point, not now. But at that point, there'd be no follow-up, no accountability. Um, and I don't think that from YouTube's perspective... That's a problem. Yeah. Why do they care? And it sucks because this is, I, I, I love pulling it all the way back to this every time, but this is the Blizzard developers on stage problem where more transparency, more access to different parts of companies and stuff just gets them put on pikes constantly. Um, which sucks because it's a thing everybody wants, um, but it ends up getting shut down due to community responses to things because it's easier to blow up about the stuff that you can see and that is in your face all the time yep. than dig for things. And I think a lot of companies and maybe people are just tired yeah. of there being some kind of controversy um, and just looking for, looking for sources of controversy and just kind of going, oh, okay, that's a source of... Okay, let's just make it so that doesn't happen again. Oh, yeah. Let's make it so that one doesn't happen again. Yeah. And if you just slowly and, pick these away. And there's honestly very little benefit for a platform to, for a platform itself. Think, think of the amount of times that a platform itself was in the news and it was a good thing. Usually what the platforms want is they want the creators on the platform to be popping off all over the place because then that pulls people into the platform yes. anyways and then if you're spending more time on the platform then while you're on the platform the platform can kind of try to monetize you youtube premium twitch turbo whatever it is but you want the creator to be pulling people in you don't really want your name plastered all over the place all the time because it's almost guaranteed going to be negative information well that's the thing like negative negativity sells um I could I could probably count on my hands and feet the number of times that we have made the news for anything positive in the entire time this company has existed. And I would need more than those digits to count the number of articles and mentions and videos just in the last few months alone. Yeah. Right? Like it, it it's it's no secret that people people want to see a scandal. They want to see yep. a downfall. They don't want to see slow consistent growth they don't want to see you know a, a, a more complex story uh about you know growing pains and and trying your best and sometimes screwing up and like it's it's nuanced and that's a lot of work it's a lot of mental load uh, i think that something is bad is more entertaining it's easier it's 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 popcorn. It goes down easy, you know. Deprecated said they want strawberry, but honestly, you can you can deconstruct that relatively simple sentence a little bit and like, yeah, the hack brought in a c incredible amount of attention. Yeah, incredible amount. Yep. I, we had more eyes on us than like ever, basically. Well, not quite. There was another one after that, um, but <laughs> ever so far. <laughs> <laughs> um but like yeah it, it was um that was a big deal and it wasn't obviously just the strawberry but like that's part of part of the story that brought tons of people in and like all of our properties exploded in a good way at that time yeah yeah dave, there was more eyes on the channel there's more eyes on Flowplane. there's more eyes on ltt store there's more eyes on everything dave ger says no one reads a news story that has the headline 100 children had a good day today and nothing bad happened you know, I was watching um, I was watching the Karate Kid with my son and his friend because um, they were checking out the new TV and they had a sleepover and they were watching the movie and Which I was like, one? Uh, first one, nice. Um, and and I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to be that like weird parent that comes and hangs out with you know let them let them do their thing, but they were very settled into their movie. They were not like talking about anything. And I sat in the back row and just kind of was like, yeah, you know what. I'm going to watch The Karate Kid, I guess. It's been, I was probably his age yeah. the last time I watched it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a scene where, um, where the sensei, 
uh, lends the kid, I forget anyone's names in the movie or whatever, but the sensei lends the kid his car. And it's like, you know, his collection of cars is like, his. these are prized possessions. Like, the kid's like mind blown that when it's time for the dance or prom or whatever it is, that he's allowed to borrow this car. And they go out of their way, right? Like, remember, American car culture was still a thing kind of in the 80s. Like, it was sort of coming towards a, a time of big change. Um, but it was still very much a thing in the oh, 80s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so even without necessarily, you know, product placements and making sure that the emblems are in every flipping shot or whatever, there was clearly a lot of thought and work that went into making this car look like a million bucks. Like it was beautiful and the way it shines when he drives it. And, and, and he, he rolls out in the car to go pick up the girl, you know, and, um, then they go on their date and he kind of passes off the car as his own because he's like trying to show off a little bit and asks her if she wants to drive it and she gets behind the wheel and I think she's only just gotten her license and he got his license like that day or something like that and they they pull out of the parking lot from the dance and she's like asking how fast does it go and he responds I don't want to find out and it fades to black and then the next scene comes <laughs> And I was sitting there going, they don't do that anymore. No. Something. Never. Something scandal. That car is crashing, man. That scandal. Dad's pissed. Is, is too spicy. And it's. Someone's it's, going to the hospital. It's too easy to create a, a tension, to create a, an angry scene, to create heightened emotions between our characters by having this prized possession damaged. I can't remember the last time I saw an interaction between characters in a piece of media where someone lends someone else something that is one of their most prized possessions and the other one respectfully cares for it and returns it in pristine condition after enjoying it and is thankful. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not trying to say the 80s was better or whatever because... I, realistically, I wasn't even there. I wasn't born yet, <laughs> right? And it's clear that there were lots of problems. You yeah, know, it's yeah, not like yeah. we don't have pretty in-depth historical records. Yeah, I'm just saying that from a media standpoint, a little bit less. We're very dialed extremes. into anger and controversy and upset and and disrespect. Um, and you didn't you didn't need that. You didn't need that in this movie.